Welcome to the crossroads of the known and the unknown. This is AJ Paz, Spiritual Journalist Podcast. If you want to explain electricity to someone who doesn't know anything about electricity, you say, well, you talk about an electric current. Now, the word current is borrowed from rivers. It's borrowed from hydraulics. And so you explain electricity in terms of water. Now, electricity is not water. It behaves actually in a different way, but there are some ways in which the behavior of water is like the behavior of electricity. And so you explain it in terms of water. Or if you're an astronomer and you want to explain to people what you mean by an expanding universe and curved space, you say, well, it's as if you had a black balloon and there are white dots on the black balloon and those dots represent galaxies. And as you blow the balloon up, uniformly, all of them grow and grow farther apart. But you're using an analogy. The, the actual universe is not a balloon with white dots on it. So in the same way, we use these sort of images to try and make sense of the world. And we at present are living under the influence of two very powerful images, which are in the present state of scientific knowledge, inadequate. And one of our major problems today is to find an adequate, satisfying image of the world. All right, now, the two images which we have been working under for 2,000 years and maybe more are what I would call two models of the universe. And the first is called the ceramic model and the second, the fully automatic model. The ceramic model of the universe is based on the book of Genesis, from which Judaism, Islam, and Christianity derive their basic picture of the world. And the image of the world in the book of Genesis is that the world is an artifact. It is made as a potter takes clay and forms pots out of it, or as a carpenter takes wood and makes tables and chairs out of it. Don't forget, Jesus is the son of a carpenter and also the son of God. So the image of God and of the world is based on the idea of God as a technician, Potter, carpenter, architect, who has in mind a plan and who fashions the universe in accordance with that plan. So basic to this image of the world is the notion, you see, that the world consists of stuff, basically. Primordial matter, substance, stuff, as pots are made of clay. Now, clay by itself has no intelligence. Clay does not of itself become a pot although a good potter may think otherwise. Because if you were a really good potter, you don't impose your will on the clay. You ask any given lump of clay what it wants to become, and you help it to do that. And then you become a genius. But the ordinary idea I'm talking about is that simply, clay is unintelligent. It's just stuff. Well, now, in the course of time, in the evolution of Western thought, the ceramic image of the world ran into trouble, changed into what I call the fully automatic model or image of the world. In other words, Western science was based on the idea that there are laws of nature. And it got that idea from Judaism and Christianity and Islam. That, in other words, the potter, the maker of the world in the beginning of things, laid down the laws and the, the law of God, which is also the law of nature, in, say, the, the metaphysics of Ernst Haeckel and T.H. Huxley, the world is basically nothing but energy. Blind, unintelligent force. And likewise, in parallel to this, in the philosophy of Freud, the basic psychological energy is libido, which is blind lust. And it is only a fluke. It is only as a result of pure chances that resulting from the exuberance of this energy, there are people with values, with reason, with languages, with culture, and with love. Just a fluke, like, you know, 1,000 monkeys typing 1,000 typewriters for a million years will eventually type the Encyclopedia Britannica. And, of course, the moment they stop typing the Encyclopedia Britannica, they will relapse into nonsense. And so in order that that shall not happen, because you and I are flukes in this cosmos, and we like our way of life, we like being human, if we want to keep it, say these people, we've got to fight nature.
because it'll turn us back into nonsense the moment we let it. And so we've got to impose our will upon this world as if we were something completely alien to it from outside. And so we get a culture based on the idea of the war between man and nature. And we talk about the conquest of space, the conquest of Everest, and the great symbols of our culture are the rocket and the bulldozer. You know, we're in space already, way out. If anybody cared to be sensitive and let what's outside space come to you, you can if your eyes are clear enough. Aided by telescopes, aided by radio astronomy, aided by all the kind of sensitive instruments we can devise. We are as far out in space as we're ever going to get. And you don't need to beat nature into submission. Why be hostile to nature? Because after all, you are a symptom of you as a human being. You grow out of this physical universe in just exactly the same way that an apple grows off an apple tree. This has been the AJ Parr Spiritual Journalist Podcast. Please like, share, and subscribe.